Hello, everybody. Welcome to the next episode of uh, Late Friday Night's Banter Bleeds. So uh, today we begin actually with uh, already crying baby <laughs> and not far away from me. So, um, of course, uh, I don't have to explain uh, why it happens. Uh, it's obvious because I have a baby, okay? So uh, I do hope he will stop doing it very soon. Uh, maybe you don't hear it right away, but, um, well, maybe it will uh, sometimes interrupt. So, uh, never mind, let's go to Blitzing. Um, I showed up not too early today, so, um, but uh, we still have a lot of challenges already. So, uh, 17 challenges, which means uh, I will do the usual stuff. So, I will start with uh, newcomers, so three or four games and then we will do one by one all right all right um, let's go so what do we have here there are a lot of different guys so I yeah we played already many times uh, cluster Frau we played Little Finger, Little Finger, we have never played, premium user, five minutes, everything is fine, but I will be playing black, okay, not a problem, let's start with, no, I will be playing white, all right, even better, here we go. E4, C5. So, what do we have here? We have Sicilian. Knight C6, and probably there will be Sveshnikov or Kalashnikov, or maybe just a classical Sicilian like Knight F6, Knight C3, and D6. Let's see. Or maybe even G6, I don't know. No, e5, okay, Sveshnikov. Now b5. <sighs> My boy keeps crying. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, now goes to d6. I'm not sure it was a good idea for black, to be honest. But let's see. Okay. So here, usually, white has two options, I guess. Something strange like queen c7. Maybe I just mix something up. Another option is just to take on e7. Let's take on e7. I guess it, it is just all right. Knight takes e7, preparing d5. But now I have pair of bishops, so maybe d5 is not that bad for me. If I play bishop c4, for example, there is a possibility to take on e4, then to play d5, but then knight d6 check is good for me. So bishop c4 is actually possible, but bishop c4 gives black a chance to play b5. So maybe... Can I just play the easy way? I mean, just bishop to d2, d5, takes, 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 everything, then castles. I have a pair of bishops and a slight advantage, I guess. But the knight on d5 will be quite good. So it is maybe not the good idea. Another interesting thing is just to try to exploit the weakness of b6, to play knight a4, knight takes e4, knight b6, rook goes to b8, and then what? I just sacrifice the pawn in this case, but achieve not so much. Well, all right, let's get back to bishop c4, bishop c4, b5, bishop b3, b4. Also not very uh, interesting. f4 is probably a move here. Also interesting try just to undermine e5. Well, after f4, probably black will play d6 or something. Okay, let's try f4. Duke Crusher asked Andre, what is the name of your child? Mark. His name is Mark. 
Bishop takes f4. I'm not sure that taking on f4 was was a good idea because now, look, my bishop goes to d6, blockading d7, preventing castling and simply occupying very good position. So it was better for black to try just d6 supporting e5 pawn instead of taking on f4, that's for sure. Klosterfrau asks, with a K or a C? With the K. <laughs> yeah. With the K at the end, I mean. Oh, King D8. That is strange. But all right. Maybe it also makes sense. I don't know. So now I can play E5, but then Rook E8. I can also just castle, I think. Yeah, castling should be just all right. Bishop c4 now, attacking f7 also looks quite logical. I don't know what is better. Okay, there is also the threat of taking on e4 and then rook e8. So let's just castle, completing the development. And Fuchs asks, like, Deutsche Mark, genau. <laughs> 98, okay. So what to do now? I definitely want to save my bishop, it looks very fine. So bishop goes to g3. That's why Jose says, uh, like Taimanov. Mm, not really. Rather like Zuckerberg. <laughs> but okay. So now I have pair of bishops. I have better development. The king on d8 is, well, not so good at very least. What can I do? Bishop c4. Just developing the last minor piece and attacking f7. So winning the time. And now there are a lot of interesting ideas. For example, knight to d5, knight d5, but then what? Bishop takes d5. Well, why not? There is also an interesting idea just to play h4, h5, something like this. Let's try h4. Oh, come on. My opponent prepared knight e5. Why the hell did I play this? Just forgot that my opponent also has some play. But still, I should be better. And now... If bishop goes to b7, d7 will be not that good protected, so maybe it makes sense for me just to prepare for this. So rook f1, now I want to take on e5 and then to penetrate the 7th rank. Oh, then this drops the knight, okay. The king was already on d8, my friend, so rook f8. Rook f8 is hanging, okay. All right. Still don't want to give up my bishop. He's very strong. So let's open up a position. Not because I have pair of bishops now, just because I have extra minor piece. So it makes sense to activate all the pieces. Okay, knight to e6. There are a lot of <coughs> different ways to convert the advantage. So let's just take on e6 first. Now check takes e8, 
and rook f1. Can't see the defense against rook f8 checkmate. I mean, satisfactory defense. There is, of course, bishop f3, but it doesn't help. By the way, very, very common pattern for studies. So, the followers of my Training Tuesday show know this pattern pretty, pretty well, I guess. So, so, um, as far as I remember, uh, a6 is playable. a6 is playable. Uh, up to knight e6, bishop d6, and queen e7, queen takes e7. Uh, the better way to play this, again, if, if I don't mix up something, um, is king takes e7. But no, here in this position, if king takes e7, then I play bishop g5 already with the threat of knight d5. No, it should be different. Should be different, maybe without. Yeah, maybe without the knight f6. Yeah, there is an interesting variation, this one. Uh, again, if I don't mix something up, so a friend of mine, uh, Grandmaster Eugene Miroshinchenko, played it uh, many years ago. So something like e5, knight to b5, and here h6. Can it be true or not? So covering g5, and then after uh, knight e6, bishop d6, queen d6, queen e7, uh, queen takes e7, king takes e7, knight c3, knight f6, something like this. And then simply d6, bishop e6, and so on. And this endgame appears uh, not that clear, despite what has pair of bishops. Well, it's not that easy to, to prove that they mean anything. Yeah, so I guess in this in this situation, when we already have this typical Sveshnikov setup, well, a6 is dubious at the very least. Uh, so knight takes e7, f4. But here still, it was playable just to, to make this d6, I guess, protecting e5, and uh, position is not that clear. So definitely white should should have the edge, but still, black has good chances to survive it, or maybe even to come up with a counterplay. So after e takes f4 and uh, bishop takes f4, of course, white achieved a great, great position. So knight g6, bishop to d6, blockading everything. And now, well, black has serious problems with completing the development. So white simply dominates here in the center on both flanks. This bishop on d6 is just a monster. <laughs> yeah, great piece, great strong point, and so on. So d6 was definitely the best chance. Anyways, thanks for the game. Um, who is the next? Who is next? Let's see. Uh, well, as shown, we already played. So let's see somebody else. I'm not sure how to pronounce it. That's Cheka. Cheka, maybe. All right, Germany, five minutes premium user, and we have never played, so accept. Now with black pieces, okay. What's wrong with this? So your move, my friend, come on. D4, all right. Bishop G5, Trumpovsky, Trumpovsky. So, pair of bishops already. On the move number four, but of course it is a well-known line. So, here usually black develops the bishop on g7. Sometimes it is possible to play g5, sometimes it is possible to play g6.
So, um, there is a trickier order of moves, I think. So, not to play knight f3, rather to play bishop d3 and knight e2, intending to play f4. So, here I think I can afford playing g5, but then I have to be ready to meet e5. So, g5, e5, d takes e5, knight to e4, queen goes away somewhere, uh, d takes e5, knight takes e5. Isn't it dangerous for black? I'm not sure. Could be. But I think I will be all right. So let's try g5. A bit more active than g6, grabbing the space, right? Yeah, I know, it looks a bit strange, but I think that it gives black a chance to uh, maybe even to attack on the king side at some point. So, just to play h5, g4, something like this. Okay, e5, I don't think it is a serious threat, so let's play bishop g7. I mean, after e5... I don't have to take, I can play queen to e7, and I'm okay. Then e5 will be the object of attack. So it's like like the good version of uh, a lurking defense with a pair of bishops already on the board. Okay, so what to do now? Um, g4? No, it's too much. It doesn't really make sense. So queen to e7, going away from this, e5 in advance, and then then to do what? And where to castle? <laughs> that is an interesting question. Anyways. Queen e7 looks solid, so let's do it. There is also an interesting maneuver like knight f8, knight g6, then intending to occupy f4 at some point, maybe forcing white to play g3. So, this could be, this could be interesting. Because if white played g3 at some point, then light squares around the king become quite vulnerable, and my bishop c8 might become a very important piece. So do I have the time for this knight of eight, knight g6 right now? Not so clear, but... I guess at least I can try. There is also an idea just to play b6, bishop b7. But all this looks a bit... a bit strange to me. But let's try knight of eight. I, I don't know. Looks interesting, at very least. After all, it is just a blitz game, right? So we can take some risks. So some principles of opening play are definitely violated by black, but position is not that open, so everything is all right. Okay, queen e2 just provokes me to play knight g6, so the point of that now f4, the square that I wanted to occupy, looks even more tempting because there is the queen on e2. And g3 weakens the king side. So now I think it makes sense for me to play e5, but this weakens f5 square, I don't like it. So the knight is here to play knight e3, then to occupy f5 or d5. So what to do instead? It is also an interesting idea just to play h5, h4. Mm, let's try exactly this. So g3, then h5, h4. All right, e5. I think it's better for me just to just to wait a bit, maybe what will take on d6 himself. So what to do instead? Bishop d7 looks just logical, preparing castle in long. If nothing else works. Also my bishop is about to occupy c6 at some point. 
could be also a good idea. All right, knight d2 intends into occupy e4 square. So maybe now d5 looks okay. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Or d takes e5 first. No, d takes e5, bishop g6, and then knight takes e5. This looks ugly for black. Let's start with this. Of course, it is a great strategic risk because I can completely damage my pawn structure by taking on d6, then taking on g6. I'll have a lot of weakened pawns, but at the same time, uh, I'll have a pair of bishops. There will be the long diagonal a8, h1 completely weakened. Okay, I just missed this. <laughs> I mean, now I lose d6 pawn, so yeah. Everything now feels like a butch pull. Okay, if I can just play d5, then everything will be all right. I mean, d5, knight d6, check, then king f8. And I win the knight, I think. Or not. Let's try it. Maybe I missed something, I don't know. If knight c4 goes away, just take on d6. That's the point. But bishop takes here, okay. I take here. Uh huh, knight goes to e5 or something, I don't know. With a perpetual, if I take on d6? No. Okay. Minor piece up. Have no idea why did I do this. And I have only 28 seconds, so I'm about to lose this, but okay, after this move, I think I will win. Despite the great time trouble. <clears throat> Oh, thank you. Yeah, that was that was too much. So at some point, White just decided to sacrifice everything. So crazy game a bit. So let's have a look in this moment when White played knight to e4. That was really interesting. So knight e4, okay, I played d5. Knight e to d6, I think, is the only move. Again, if I'm not missing something. Because knight cd6 is the same. So the knight will be hanging on d6. But here, White doesn't even have this bishop takes g6. So, yeah, it was definitely a good idea to play with the knight e4 to d6. And after king f8, bishop here, takes here, queen f3, king g8. I thought that knight e5 was a move. So the point is that if I take the knight d6, then queen f7 check, king here, takes here, king here. So at least the perpetual, right? Uh, but uh, it's possible to take on d7, I think. Yeah, so queen f7, king here, and now to take on d7, even with the queen, because bishop, my bishop is pinned. So yeah, it is definitely good for white. Uh, very good, maybe almost winning. So I wanted to make the intermediate move rook to f8 here. Let's see if I, if white can do something. So queen is hanging, uh, the knight on d6 is hanging as well. If queen goes to, I don't know, d3, I then just take on d6, queen takes on g6, is not that dangerous. Knight takes on g6, of course, attacks both rooks. But at the very least, I have uh, two minor pieces, two great bishops, potentially two great bishops to compensate the missing rook. Um, but okay, I think I could have played better at some point, maybe here. So bishop takes g6, first of all, deserves serious attention prior to doing anything else. So takes here. Let's see if there is a difference if white plays knight to e4 now. I think it will be just a transposition after d5. 
Uh, but what about just uh, d5 move? That was probably very, very nice. Um, because I can't believe I can just take on d5. Maybe it is just my only move, because if I play e5, then knight e4, and d6 drops. So I have to take on d5, and then knight takes d6, check. Yeah, it's it's lost, I think. Simply lost for, for black, or very close to. So yeah, d5, prior to doing anything uh, with this knight e4, I think d5 deserves serious attention. So maybe I have to do something crazy here, like b5, just attacking the knight, and then taking on d5. But after b5, you have knight e3, so good position. So definitely black made a lot of um, unnecessary moves here, so that was too risky. So taking on d6 was correct, cd6, but knight e4 was a mistake. So bishop takes g6, damaging the pawn structure, and then d5, fixing the d6 weakness prior to playing knight e4. Very promising, I think. Yeah, it looks good for white. That was the best chance. All right, now uh, let's continue. And the next newcomer, let's see. Uh, there are a lot of different guys. Uh, Vaini 2k or Vaini uh, 2k. Um, we have already played one game. So let's see the guy I have never played. So the guy from Spain, Koinonia, he's not online, so let's see, somebody else already played, Blitz Enemy, I think we've played already, yeah, Smugs too many times, Alexander K. All right. Let's play premium user, five minutes online, never played before, so accept. And white pieces again, so let's play e4. So you're welcome, my friend. It's your move. I would like to play. I'm not premium, though. Well, only premiums have the right to play. So become a premium, my friend. And maybe next time your challenge, your challenge will be accepted. Uh, Fuxia asks, uh, Andre, how is your German course going? Uh, actually, I have mixed feelings. So, it is a good, good course, of course. <laughs> and it is going not that bad. I learned a lot of new things, but it is actually quite hard level. And, um, well, I have some problems. Sometimes I'm just dependent on my m mood and I can't say a single word. Sometimes I just speak all right for my level, of course. All right, there is no answer. So let's go further. Let's go further. Chess Ninja. We have never played the guy from United States and high rated so let's play chess ninja and here we go e4 i hope yeah here black replies immediately that is cool so chess ninja what is that taimanov paulson uh, bishop d3 Queen C7. 
So c4, I think, is the main move here. I might be wrong, of course. But it looks fine. Let's try it. Castles. So we have a rotate bind. Maybe even hedgehog after b6, bishop b7. So very typical bone structure, which is very hard, which is very hard to break through. So let's see. So my bishop is going to b1 maybe, and uh, the whole set top is dedicated to the attack to the attack on the king side. So something like f4, f5 maybe. Rook f3, rook h3 is also a typical maneuver here. So let's see. Knight e5 is also quite an interesting idea, of course, to sacrifice the minor piece positionally, but I don't think it is correct right away. So let's prepare it a bit. So first king h1, just to play f4 to grab more space. E4 is protected two times, so it's not the case. Queen is going to b8 and then to a8, right? Right. So let's start the attack. <laughs> Andre, say something in German like Schlange and Y from Azure Mist. Yeah, truly. I'm not the clone, okay? And it is not a circus. <laughs> Queen b8, all right. Queen is going to a8, right? To attack e4. Let's protect it in advance, just queen e2. Why not? Andre, if you did a video series for Chess24, what would it be on? Um, maybe on some opening in general, based on, let's say, experience and games and approaches of a, one of the world champions, let's say. Maybe something like this. Okay, what to do now? Rook f3, rook h3. Let's try to do this rook lift. Not quite sure if it will give me anything, but it it worth trying, I think. It's worth trying. So my rook will exert the pressure on h7. At some point, maybe I will have a chance to break through with the e5, and my bishop will be connected to this attack as well. All right, rook to h3. Maybe rook to g3 was also an interesting idea. I'm not quite sure, but with the bishop on c7, having the rook on g3 looks a bit dangerous. So how to continue the attack? e5 takes nothing. Uh, g4 is just too much, I think. So I need another rook. Okay, let's go. Another rook here. <sighs> Maneuvering. <laughs> So today it feels like it feels like there is a problem with focusing. But okay. There are a lot of interesting things in chat area, so Alright, Nine of Fate additionally protecting H seven. Over protecting H seven actually. So, maybe queen to d3 just exerting additional pressure and going away from 
this e file where opponent's rook exerts some indirect pressure. Let's try it. I'm not quite sure what am I going to do with all this. But at least it looks a bit dangerous for black. At least. Just a bit. So maybe my opponent will be a bit nervous about my queen maneuvering somewhere around his king. Uh, I don't see how to how to manage to do this. I mean to break through. Knight to f5 at some point, but it's too early. Knight to d5 also looks interesting. Maybe just right now, I don't know. Knight to d5, e d5, e d5, the knight f5 sort of attack. Maybe there will be something, maybe not. Not so many time, not so much time left, so. I have to be quick. Of course it's crazy. Of course it is not correct. But I just want to try it. I will have just a tiny compensation for this missing minor piece. Only one pawn and the fact that bishop on b7 is not in play at the moment. And I achieved sort of good spot for my knight to continue the attack. But it might be, of course, not enough. And it feels like it is not enough, of course. <laughs> hmm. What is going on? Let's attack the rook. Aha! All right. Now two minor pieces, right? Against against my rook, but I just missed bishop f5 followed by knight h4. Come on, so stupid. But my opponent missed it too. Okay, I was I was lucky. I was lucky. Yeah, very bad game, very bad game, very stupid one. So knight e5 was definitely not good. That is for sure. That was actually very, very bad. What can I do with this position now? I have no idea. So everything, well, almost everything is protected in Black's camp. So let us try some maneuvering. Wow, oh, come on, another mistake, another blunder. So stupid blunder, come on, I'm a minor piece down. One of the worst games in my life, to be honest. Yeah, that is true. But I have two pawns. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> yeah, of course that is lost. Why on b6? I have no idea. Yeah. Oh, what a shit I played. Come on. What a shit. Ah. Oh. Very bad game. Very, very bad game. Um. Yep. Very bad game. Okay. So 95 was was complete shit. Course. That was too early and too bad to be true. 
let's have a look at that moment. Of course, I achieved nothing. It was better for me to maneuver, not to maneuver this rook f3, rook h3, maybe to start the attack a bit earlier, maybe to maneuver my queen somewhere uh, towards g3 square. But okay, that's all just the details. So knight g6 here, it was a critical moment. Uh, of course, knight e5 is just just very bad move. What to do instead? Maybe just queen g3, exerting some additional pressure in black's position, maybe intending to play f5 at some point. Um, maybe just playing something like knight d4 to e2, protecting f4 additionally and just waiting for black's active operations. A lot of different moves possible here, but the point was just to um, keep this position for some time uh, to wait for a better moment to come up with something active like f5, e5, or maybe still that knight e5, but yeah, I played a very bad game and my opponent played quite quite well. Okay, uh, congratulations, Chess Ninja. Um, you're welcome next time, next Friday. I will be happy to, to play one more game with you. So, so, here we come back to the normal order of challenges. So let's play Mabus. And I play with white pieces again. Okay. Knight to f3 and again Sicilian. Very nice. A6, let's come back to bishop c4 move. So as far as I remember, I played h3 against Mobus, right? Um, I also played knight b3. I also played bishop b2, I think. I don't remember what didn't I play. Castles, castles, king to h1. And queen to e2, protecting the bishop on c4. There was already a threat of knight takes d4, so it's important. At the same time, I prepare rook to d1. b6. So now e4 is a problem. So it might be a problem, of course. So let's protect it with the f3. Looks a bit dubious, but okay, at least it is solid. Do you see this? So bishop just goes away and okay, e4 is protected. g4 square as well. And I can play f4 at some point later. Maybe after knight c4 here, I will just play f4. Yeah, so here it looks like f4 should be played. Because anyway, my main idea is just to play f5 at some point, opening up the diagonal. For example here. Uh-huh, e5. Okay, let's go away. I was just calculating uh, knight b5 a bit, but a takes b5, knight b5, then queen c5. So what? All right. It gives me nothing. So knight goes to f3. If the knight one day goes away from c4, there will be something connected with knight g5 attacking f7. g4, g5. Now looks 
a natural plan for me, but I'm not sure how to prepare that. Maybe even to play g4 without preparation. We will see. At some point it is a good idea just to give up the pawn on the g-file, then to occupy the g-file with the rook, and to come up with a direct attack against g7, for instance. If black, of course, takes on g4. If black doesn't take on g4, then I just play g5, grabbing more space, uh, uh, winning the counter over d5 square, then g6 is possible, or f6, lots of interesting things. Okay, so maybe knight g4, I don't know. g4, knight g4, maybe it's too experimental, of course, but... It looks like a natural idea, so why not to try it? So g4, knight g4, uh, rook g1, knight goes back to f6, then what, bishop to g5 or something. Or maybe just to prepare g4 without this sacrifices. Just to play rook g1 first, even. Why not? Now let's try rook g1. Looks ugly, but... I don't really want to sacrifice the material here, that's what I mean. And I want to provoke black maybe to play h5 or something that will definitely uh, weaken black's position. Pawn sacrifice, or what in that? Knight takes d5, knight takes d5, e d5, e4. Knight jumps to g5. Okay, let's take this pawn, I don't know. Why not? Yeah, rook and g1 looks ugly, of course. <laughs> That's true. That's true. But maybe it's not a big deal. Now I have extra pawn at very least. But I'm not sure where to go with my knight. It's knight g5, h6. Knight takes f7 then. I'm just in, in a mood to sacrifice something today. Do you see this? I don't know why. There is just like great demand. So h6, knight takes f7. I mean, if queen takes f7, then bishop takes c4. If king takes f7, then there is something like d6. Looks very tempting to play. Bishop takes d6, then what? Rook takes d6, queen takes d6, bishop takes c4, bishop d5. I mean, exchange down, right? Uh, rook takes c4, queen c4, bishop d5, at the very least, it is possible. Oh, bishop c5 drops the knight on c4, and then bishop takes g1, then what? Not quite sure. But it feels like it is a mistake. D6, maybe to start with a D6 move. Just opening up diagonal A2, G8. It feels like it is an important thing to do. If Knight takes D6, then I'll just take on D6, I think, and taking on F7 will be extremely dangerous. There is also some combinations connected with Queen H5 at some point. So it is an additional resource for me to attack h7 and f7. So can I just take there on d6? I won't even calculate, it looks so natural. And now f7 should be captured. I don't know with which piece, with the bishop or with the knight. 
Or maybe to start with queen h5, I don't know. Queen h5, Britain sort of taking on h7 and additionally attacking f7. This also looks very cool. Let's start with the queen h5. Yeah. I don't think it is possible to survive this position with black pieces. So now definitely to take with the bishop on f7, I think. Knight f7 was also great, that's for sure. Now say bishop e8, rook e8, knight e6. Looks, looks just winning. Some material, right? Yep, extra exchange rook f1 is coming. Yep. So, interesting game, interesting game, but I'm not sure it was really necessary to play um, d5, first of all. And I'm also not quite sure if uh, I had a better position after knight to g5. Let's have a look at that. So knight g5, when I played knight to g5. I think bishop c5 was definitely a mistake. Bishop c5 was definitely a mistake. What about just h6 here? So I saw something connected with this knight takes f7. I wasn't sure, however, so king f7, otherwise I take on c4. Now, d6, I wanted to play this move. The point is that if queen goes somewhere on c6 or c5, I just play d7. If queen goes to d7, I take on c4, so it's necessary to take on d6. Now, of course, I can take on c4 several times then. Uh, on d6, regaining the sacrifice minor piece, but in this case, black will have an enormous activity after taking on c2, then playing e3 at some point, or maybe um, e3 first and then taking on c2. So it's definitely not cool for white. I wanted to try something like this, but I also don't think it is good. So queen takes here, bishop takes c4. Um, well, if bishop d5, then there is something like rook to d1. Bishop c4, queen h5, check, g6, again, not clear. Um, yeah, just absolutely not clear. So maybe to start with d6 here, let's say d6. So if bishop takes d6, then also nothing, I guess. Yeah, so h6 was a good move. Well, maybe not that great if white just placed knight to h3. Or maybe I can even take on e4 here, I'm not sure, knight to d6, then no, it doesn't look good. So maybe knight h3 is forced here, after which black can try something like knight d6, blockading my d5 pawn, and so on. But, well, there's also a weakening on the king side, sort of, so I have an idea of f6, so position is quite complicated here. But bishop c5 is definitely something wrong. So I just played d6, now... If bishop takes d6, we have the same position but without h6, right? So I just take on c4 several times and I win the minor piece on d6. So it's not possible to do. Which means that, well, black is just in the big trouble. So after knight d6, rook takes d6 was very natural. Maybe it was better to, to take on g1. So at very least, the rook is hanging now. The rook can go away easily because of h2. Uh, so queen h2 is a check mating threat if rook goes away somewhere except for h6 probably. And what to do here? So to take on f7 with the knight, to take on f7 with the bishop still looks very good. Um, especially knight takes f7 because it protects the rook simultaneously. Bishop f4 is kind of move. Queen to h5 is still maybe not that bad. Yeah, queen to h5 is an interesting try here because if queen takes d6, it is very nice. So queen f7, queen g8, rook g8, knight f7. Very cool. Smother it, mate. 
So rook is invulnerable in this case, so h6 is forced. h2 is no longer hanging, so my rook can go away somewhere if it wants. But I think it is even better just to, to grab on f7 with the same with same ideas. So takes here. If king goes to h8, then rook takes h6, queen h6, checkmate. If king goes to f8, then what? Well, at very least, knight h7, king goes to e7, rook e6 now, and then takes e8, g1 is still hanging and so on. So yeah, that was already bad, in my opinion. So, yeah. Do you know. How to improve black's play? Everything looked very natural. Very natural. So e5, knight f3. Well, usually it is not the greatest idea in general just to put the knight on c4. So I guess black can achieve more simply preparing d5 at some point. So you just play something like rook e8, then bishop to f8. Say after f3, you just play rook e8 first. Then let's say I play something like bishop a2. So bishop to f8, exerting some pressure along the e-file, potential pressure. So at some point you already want to play d5. So this rook e8, bishop f8 is a typical preparation. And for what it is not that easy, uh, to achieve anything after that. So you have like queen f2, let's say, exerting some pressure on b6. You have just knight e7 move followed by knight c5. So typical scavenging idea. And I guess black is just all right here. So no problems. Should be just an equal position uh, with long maneuvering for both sides. Okay. Thanks for the game. Again, it was an interesting, interesting attack at some point. Uh, Craig Evans is the next. So let's play. And this time I play with white pieces. So let's try. Let's try to revenge Bishop B5. Come on, Gambit, 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 Gambit. Every time is the Gambit against Craig. Against Craig, sorry. So. How this shit is played. So th there is definitely the possibility just to play D3 without without big ambitions. There is also d4 move, I guess. E takes f5 is also move. So let's try d3. I've never played this uh, d3 move against Janish Gambit. But I have a feeling that it, it is also a good idea because diagonal a2, g8 is weakened, so black will definitely have some problems with finding a good place for king. And I'm not sure that d6 is the main move here, but everything can be because I'm pretty sure that my opponent knows this theory here. Bishop e7, all right. <laughs> Bishop c4 now gives me nothing because of knight a5. So maybe instead of h3, a3 deserved attention, I don't know. Takes f5 and then d4. If there is something, not quite sure, but let's try it.
at least there are some threats, right? There is a threat of d5, there is a positional threat of taking on c6, then taking on e5. If black plays e4, I think I have a tempo move, knight h4 attacking the bishop, then followed by d5. So black is not in time to build up this strong center. All right. And this is also the move. Let's take with the knight. Now there is a very weakened square on e6. There is also a spread of just taking on d4, simplifying the position. I should be just slightly better after almost every move. I don't have enough time to figure it out uh, which one is the best. Let's just castle. All right, this gives me a chance to play bishop c4, followed by knight e6, having a pair of bishops after all. So I think knight takes d4 was much more accurate decision instead of castling. And yeah, now I have a pair of bishops. Very nice. Sort of achievement for me. And three against two on the king's side, so in the end game it might be very nice. In a sense of resistance, right? So knight e5, okay. Let's just do play f4, very natural. Followed by f5 or something. That is going to occupy c5, right? Hmm. Let us save the bishop on the board. I don't want to give up my light square bishop. It's too good. Too good to fall. Too big to fall. <laughs> okay, knight to e4. Let's take this guy. What about queen d5 now? Doesn't look good for black, to be honest. grabbing the space and kicking this knight away again looks just just natural c6 okay let's get closer to to the king should be something for white here that's for sure okay how about sacrifice and exchange is it a good idea or just another bullshit i think it is bullshit so let's let's save the the rook on the board. Why should I sacrifice it? I have no idea. Okay, now there is a threat of knight g3. So king to h2, right? Right. Now there is also the threat of knight c3. Come on. Rook to f3 was a good. Or rook to b3. Well, actually, it was already a strange thing. Strange position. Black doesn't play knight to c3. That is strange to me. That is very, very strange. Okay. Only one minute, only one minute left. And no position. So I definitely missed something somewhere. As I said before, it is quite hard today to focus. I have no idea why. No. 
let's undermine something, finally. So my bishops should play. For this purpose, I just try to open up a position, so I need a lot of free space for my bishops. Let's open up position even more. Aha. Uh -huh. Opposing colored bishops. That is a good sign. So I have some chances. Or maybe I don't. There is a passed pawn, right? Also sort of a resource. Oops. Thank you. That was just in time. I was struggling to find, I was struggling to find um, the way to win this game, but okay, rookie two was, <laughs> yeah, was, was just in time. All right, so definitely black played very decent game. I missed something somewhere. So to, to start with the opening play was quite dubious, uh, but okay, uh, here, Black made an inaccuracy, I think, just casting. So instead of that, uh, I do believe 94 was much more accurate move, uh, exchanging correct pieces. So exchanging my light squared bishop. There is still a weakness on e6, but now I can't exploit it. Um, after which I think position is about to be equal, should be equal, in fact, because I don't think that Black will have some serious problems activating bishop e7. So castling, castling uh, for white was probably not good. Castling for black definitely not good. So bishop c4, 96, bishop takes e6, and now white should be better. White should be better. But then I started playing quite strange. So first of all, after 95, well, f4 was very tempting to play. 97, and then this queen d5 was also very tempting. But after this move, Probably it was much better for me to do something else. I mean, um, maybe even here, yeah, maybe even here. Maybe queen d5 was just not not necessary. So definitely I need to, to attack on the king side somehow. I have so good bishop. Um, if black will play c6, d5, that will be annoying for white. So maybe at some point it makes sense for white to play something like c4 control in d5 square, especially after black plays c6. So, how to attack on the king side? Come on. Uh, bishop e3, just completing development. Let's say c6, preparing d5 looks very natural. And then c4, controlling d5, and maybe intending to play bishop b1. So, regrouping the pieces somehow. Black also has a counterplay, that's for sure. Bishop f6, good pieces. It's not so easy for white. Maybe white is not even better. I'm not sure. I don't know. So maybe f4 was already a mistake. So f4 maybe was too much. I just helped my opponent to maneuver the knight towards the normal position. So yeah, maybe maybe just bishop e3 here, but still, after c6 I have to find something. Then no, position is very com complicated. Especially for bleeds, not that easy to make a correct decision, I think, quickly. So okay, with a nice game. Um, the next one is Azure Mist. Five minutes. Here we go. Yep. E5. There will be... Okay, I wanted to say Rue Lopez, but... There will be Italian. Italian game. Mm -hmm. Castles.
Okay, okay, so bishop b6 or bishop a7? Let's go away with the bishop. I mean, white will definitely play something like d4 or b4 at some point, so it's better to have the bishop on a7. And now, what to do now? There is a possibility to try d5, of course. Um, but why we will castle, I guess? Maybe it's not that bad. Okay. Let it be. I mean, d5 doesn't look bad. I just grab some space. Maybe intending to play d4. Maybe intending to take on e4 at some point. What I definitely want to do is just to exert some pressure, move by move. So first of all, let's play h6, just covering g5 squared. It is very important because if I play d4, let's say there will be knight g5 if my rook is on e8, for instance, because I want to put my rook on e8 sooner or later. If I play knight, bishop b6, there is also knight g5, quite annoying. So let's develop the bishop. By the way, there was a threat of taking on e4. <clears throat> because bishop on b3 was hanging. Okay, what is next? White's play is quite easy, right? Knight g3, castles, then maybe bishop d2, rook to d1, bishop back to c1, then at some point d4, maybe knight f5, a lot of different plans. So can I just take on e4 right now? Take c4, take c4, then what? b5 looks interesting. a takes b5, a takes b5, queen takes b5, bishop takes f2, king takes f2, rook takes a1. Queen takes c6, finally. Ah, <sighs> d takes e4, d takes e4, knight h5. It's also an interesting idea. Intending to meet knight g3 with the knight takes g3 or knight f4. D takes e4, d takes e4, knight to a5, intending knight b3 or bishop c4. So everything says I have to start with this move. And now let's see. Knight h5 leads to knight takes e5. Knight takes e5, queen h5. b5 is unfortunately not in time. Maybe just queen d6, but then b4. All right, but then b5 will be possible. So queen d6, preparing knight to a5, or even queen to c5, then trying to play bishop to c4. Because knight a5 immediately leads to knight takes e5. I'm not sure I will have a proper compensation. But it could be annoying for white. I don't even know what to do here. I mean, what is better for me? Knight d7 followed by knight c5. Also possible, by the way. Also possible. There are a lot of interesting things possible for black. And I don't know wh which one is better. Let's try knight a5, come on. I don't have a lot of time. Let's try to sacrifice this pawn on e5 and to achieve something like activity. Once again, I'm in the mood to, to sacrifice something today. I just attacked two weakened squares in white's camp, b3 and c4. As for b3, I want to put there my knight to grab this light squared bishop. This should be very good for me. Or just to grab the c1 bishop. This is also very nice result. So pair of bishops once again. I do love bishops. But there is the question. If it is enough to compensate the missing pawn now, So first I want to exert some pressure on the knight e5 and along the e-file because it is open now. It is open. Oh 
before it looks too much, I guess. But who knows? Let's see. So bishop takes, and now the knight is hanging. And if knight goes away, I take on e4. This looks very dangerous. Looks very dangerous now. Oh, f4. Is it really possible? I can't believe. Uh, the king is definitely not castling anywhere. But I have no time, so I have to be quick. Okay, I can take on e4 simply. Look at this. Yep. d1 square is not covered now. Yep. And look at this. Checkmate on d1. Since my bishop a7 controls f2 square. Yeah, that is, by the way, uh, the classic example of violating opening principles, right? So grabbing the material when you are not developed completely, not castling, uh, the king that is stuck in the center, uh, bad development, and so on. So I think there was nothing wrong with taking on e5. But then b4 was too much. I would definitely prefer something like knight to g3, just a solid move. Just continuing the development, preparing castling, and so on. Um, so, if I play knight b3 now, um, I think it is better just to give up the bishop c1. So, just to play this. If knight c1, then rook c1. Um, of course, I can take on h3 here and then take on e5, but. I can also take an f7 if I take an h3. So everything looks just a kai for white. So it was sort of bluff, <laughs> of course, to play knight a5. It was much better for me to start with protecting e5 somehow. So let's say knight d7 was just normal. Knight d7 protecting e5, and now knight a5 is a threat. Um, at very least, um, I want to, to play knight c5. Also good interest in square for my knights. Knight b6 attacking c4. It's also possible, so there are a lot of possibilities. So position should be, I think, with uh, the best play from both sides uh, around equal. So, okay. But knight e5 followed by b4 and then f4, though, come on, that was too much. Uh, I had much better development, and uh, after knight b3 I had already two bishops. So, that was very cool for black. All right. The next one is Duke Crusher. Well, we haven't played for ages. Thanks a lot for being with us this evening, Duke. <laughs> ah, so surprise me. You usually play something like Trumpovsky. I don't remember. Uh, London system or or what or Cole system so London system all right let's play d5 and c5 immediately I'll try to be aggressive against your London today so Queen b6 attacking b2 And now c4. As far as I remember, that is the best way to play this with black. And I have a feeling that I don't even need to prepare bishop f5. Can I just play bishop f5 immediately here? I don't remember this theory. Queen f5, queen b2, then what? Then my queen will be trapped after taking on a1, right? Or not? I don't remember. Do I want to take the risk and just play bishop f5 immediately? I do believe that g6 is also playable, but it's so tempting just to play bishop f5 immediately. Queen takes f5, queen takes b2, then what? Oh, come on, let's do it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> 
Quintus c1, and now I think I want to save my bishop and this diagonal. So I want to play h6 to have h7 square in case of knight h4. After which I will just play e6. No worries about knight h4 anymore. Oh, coffee, coffee time. The first time today. What the hell is that, Duke? What are you doing with the b3 square? I'm sure you will be punished for this. Probably even by me in this game. Just let me think of it. Knight a5, then knight goes to d2, right? Right. Well, I have no idea. Okay, b3 will be kind of weakness for a long, long time. So it's better just to complete the development and then we'll see what to do with this square. <clears throat> uh -huh. Knight is going to b5. Okay, let's prevent it. Let us just prevent it. Of course, I could have captured on the a3, but as I said before, I don't want to give up my bishop. So I do like bishops. I follow the principle that even the worst bishop is better than the knight <laughs> in many cases. So, I simply can't see where this knight goes after a6. If it goes to c2, then all right. c2 is not the best position. And uh, my knight just goes through a5 to b3 in this case. Everything looks just fine for black. Okay, bishop e2. So let's continue the development. Bishop to e7. Castles and castles. So isn't it time to occupy a5 square? So the knight goes to d2, then I can probably exchange it with the help of knight e4. Yes, true. Let's go there. Oh, bishop d1 instead. My god. After knight b3, I will have a complete control over light squares, right? Maybe I will just start with bishop d3, attacking the rook, and then knight b3. I want to provoke, well, I, I won't provoke knight to e1 because this square is simply, simply engaged with the rook already. If I play bishop knight b3, then bishop b3, queen takes b3, and a5 might be a bit annoying, to be honest. Oh, sneaky, sneaky duke crusher. Just grabbing b6 square for my queen and then maybe trying to trap my queen, but I don't believe it will be trapped there. Still, looks not very convincing. So 
how to play this correctly. I don't want to hurry up with occupational b3 square, so let's wait a bit. Let's improve other pieces and then we'll see. Ninety five, the bishop goes away. So now there is no ninety two move after knight b three at the very least. Ideally, I want just to exchange this knight. Uh huh. Okay, let's take it. Now there is no peace control in b three. Just first try to exploit the weakness of this point. If queen takes queen, there is the question, is it better to take with the pawn or with the knight? Okay. Out of question now. Um, to take this? Much better pawn structure. <clears throat> Have very good chances just to grab this pawn and a3. C3 is also under attack now. My opponent probably missed this fact. But okay. Where the knight goes? Not quite sure. Okay, e5. That is a good position for black. Even better now. Oh, still playing. Come on. Come on. I have enough time to convert it. All right. Um, so I think it is not a good uh, variation for white at all. So if you want to play the London system, just my opinion, okay? Um, I think there is a better order of moves so just to start with knight f3 here, uh, waiting for black's, say, e6 move, and after that you play bishop f4. Now you can notice the difference, so e6 is already played, so there is no bishop f5 that. Uh, great difference. If black plays d5 instead, then you can probably switch to uh, Queen's Gambit. But usually when black plays knight f6, this means black doesn't want to uh, play Queen's Gambit. So uh, there is a very uh, low probability that black will play d5. But, well, it depends on concrete opponent. Mm, I don't like playing Queen's Gambit with black, so I usually play uh, Nimtsu Indian or Queen's Indian, so definitely after knight f3 I play something like e6 or b6, yep, so I don't play d5. After which you just come back to bishop f4 and you play normal London system, because bishop f4 gives black a chance to benefit from it. So d5, e3, c5, very active approach by the way, recommended by Boris Avrok, and uh, true, black simply has no problems here, only white has problems, right? I wasn't sure that bishop f5 was correct here, but it looks like that, so only with the knight on b8, bishop f5 is not possible because of queen c8 checkmate. After knight is already on c6, well, I think it's possible to play because after queen takes f5, queen takes b2, mm, I don't see um, a good move 
for white. So, of course, after queen takes a1, it's possible to play queen c2, just something like trapping the queen. But first of all, it's not possible to trap it there uh, so easily. Uh, moreover, black has the intermediate e6 move just right now. So, you know, uh, 92 queen takes a1, I think queen escapes, right? Um, okay. Okay, there is also a possibility to play queen c1, by the way, immediately here, instead of queen b3. In this case, we will have the same position a bit later, but uh, white saves some time here, I guess. Right, so queen b3, queen c2, queen c1 is also playable. Uh, many people play this, but I just don't understand why. Because uh, definitely for black, it is a good idea to play c4, bishop f5, and so on, yeah, to have some pressure there on the queen side. Um... Here, as far as I remember, one of the best approaches for black is just to try uh, still this c4 followed by g6, bishop g7, castle, something like this. Don't remember correctly, but I uh, don't remember exactly what I wanted to say. Sorry for this. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for the game. Have not play uh, for ages. I hope you're doing well, Duke Crusher. So the next game is against I. We already played four games. And again, another game with white pieces. So let's see what did you prepare. What did you prepare, my friend, in Rui Lopez? So almost every time we have this Rui Lopez exchange for... Oh, come on! <laughs> All right, you want to repeat... You want to repeat what uh, Craig played today. Okay. What the hell? <clears throat> Okay, I'll just make castle. I just don't want to even try to understand what is going on here. And now maybe just d4 opening up everything. Let's try it. This definitely drops something, I think. D takes e5. D takes e5, knight takes e5. Looks very promising. D5, then a6 and b5. Typical contraplay, but d takes e5. Looks very nice. Let's take it. F takes e4 in the main line, smokes. And it is considered better for white. Knight takes e4 was definitely better. Because now I can take on e5. Attacking the c6, right? C6 is heading. Yeah, I definitely have to refresh <laughs> my knowledge in Yanish. Yanish Gambit or Contra Gambit, I don't remember the name exactly. The Drunken Lawyer. Hi, Andre, by the way. Hi. Hi. How are you doing? Mm. This drops the rook on h8, I guess. So I'll take on c6 and I'll take that rook. Looks delicious.
Yeah, Queen D8, Knight F7. That's true. So, same problem. Um, I mean, for you, I just um, solve more tactics. This will help you to improve. Um, the next Klosterfrau, accept black pieces. Here we go. E4, E5, Knight F3, Knight C6, C3. Oh, I'm a bit tired <laughs> of this, um, yeah, sidelines, but okay. d5, bishop b5, d takes c4, knight takes c5, queen d5, queen h5, g6, queen g5, bishop e7. After d5, there is a queen a4, as far as I remember. All right, knight takes a, sorry, goes to f6. Should be just a guy. Knight takes e4 now. Yeah. A bit passive, but definitely white has nothing here at all. So when white plays c3, I think white wants sort of active play uh, to trade black somehow. I guess this calm approach should be just, just a guy. To tame to tame white here. So, is it possible just to play bishop e7? Why not, after all? Queen h5, castles. Bishop d3, knight f6, everything is protected. Uh, queen g4 might be the problem after bishop e7. So, it is better to start with d6, I think. Yeah, let's start with the d6. By the way, why didn't I consider just queen e7? Am I stupid or what? Maybe I'm stupid. Okay. Or maybe I'm just tired. Or maybe both have no idea why didn't I consider it um. why didn't I play Queen e7 come on maybe there is nothing of course but it looks like this Petrov defense trick very very close to that but okay yeah true absolutely absolutely right so now i'm more or less forced to give up some material i guess so bishop b5 queen b5 queen d7 queen b7 White finally managed to trick me. What about Queen E7, Bishop D7, King takes D7? Is it really losing? Or maybe it's just not that good? Yeah, of course it looks awful for Black. Oh my goodness. Why am I playing so bad today? Do you have any idea? I have no idea. Maybe it is just the end of the week and I'm tired, of course, but, well, every Friday is a fucking end of the week, right? <laughs> but I'm playing very bad only today. Well, not only today, but today especially. Hmm. Bishop b5, queen b5, queen d7, queen b7, rook goes to 
you know, D8, C8. It is even possible to take on A7, so two extra pawns and no compensation at all. No, it's bad. Okay, let's play with this back king, and I have only one minute, so it will be just a complete bluff. It will be just a complete bluff. Let's try to survive it. It's awful, I know. But all right. But it's also good information for me, so... I definitely need to learn the openings, finally. I know I'm already an international master, so... I should have done this many years ago. <laughs> many years before this day. But... It's never too late, I mean. Okay, what to do now? How to play this shit. Let's start with this a6 move. First of all, where the queen goes. If queen goes to d3, I will have knight c5 with the temple. If queen goes to e2, I will have something like knight f6. Also with the temple, because I don't think white wants to exchange queens in this position. So I can speculate on queen's trade just to win some time for my development. For example, this way. It was not necessary, but I find it not so bad. This prepares Bishop E7 move. At the same time, it gives White a chance to play rookie one with the temple. But then knight f6, bishop g5, king d7, bishop f6, chase f6, and I have an ugly pawn structure. Yep. Queen e4 was probably a mistake. It was probably better for me to play g6, bishop g7. Wow, but why doesn't want to? Why doesn't want to? Play rookie one. That is good for me, I think. This leaves me with some hopes. The only problem that I have only 40 seconds on my clock, which is very bad. Still, I have some chances. I feel in the power of my ugly position. <clears throat> oh, that was a serious mistake. Yeah, that was a, just a bad blunder, but my opponent missed bishop takes c5 followed by knight e5 with absolutely winning position. I'm quite lucky in this game. I play shit, but it's not a complete shit. I mean, I am already a pawn up. Look at this. What a great day for me. <laughs> yeah. I'm just joking, of course. It's complete shit. Not a game. Even having the extra pawn, I'm struggling to complete a development. All right, not that bad. Now I'm activating the rook through a5, controlling f5 square, by the way. <clears throat> Another rook will go to the game through h5. Look at this great maneuvers. My bishop is still in f8, but I guess I'm dominating the position. Should be winning for black. Well, at least I hope it will be winning. 
<clears throat> I have no time, however. Okay. Let's try to be active. As active as I can. Yes. Oh, nice. Cool. I won. I won it. Did you see this? A5, A4 with the rook A5, then H5, H4 with the rook H5. Just great. But of course, it was a complete shit. Um, I had a lost position at some point. So I guess queen E4 uh, was not good. Um, so the first moment where white could, could have benefited from uh, my absolutely wrong approach in the opening uh, was here with the rook E1. And... After knight f6, just bishop g5. So I don't have bishop e7 still, so I, I can't play knight takes d5 because of rook e8 and rook a8. So I have to play something like this, but this is, of course, ugly. So material uh, is equal, and the knight is definitely much better than this stupid bishop f8. So the knight goes somewhere um, like knight e2, knight e1, knight g3, knight f5. It is also possible to play knight e2, knight e4. There are a lot of different possibilities. It's clear that white is better here. Um, after knight e2, however, uh, I had a chance. Uh, I had a chance. Sorry, it's just to take on d2, for example. Our bishop d2, king d7 position is absolutely equal. So what already lost the advantage, already lost the possibility to um, uh, punish me for this shit with king d7. Um, after rook e1 and knight f6, I played this, and after bishop e3, I made a stupid move. One of the uh, worst moves in my life. I played a5. Come on. Bishop takes c5, dc5, and knight e5. Should be absolutely winning because you win f7 pawn. That's it. Game over. I mean, king e8, knight g6 takes h8. So, king d6, king d8, knight takes f7. And if king gets to c8, knight takes f7 anyway, followed by rook e8. I, well, <sighs> I can't see this position without a great ache in my heart. That's just a pain, you know? Yeah. So bishop c5 was a winning move. Bishop d4 gave me a chance to, to, to escape. So I took the pawn and then I started uh, just improving my position move by move. Okay, you still had chances, of course, to, to play better than you did. But anyway, the pawn is a pawn, right? And you had a chance just to win immediately after bishop takes c5. So come on. Too many blunders today. I'm sorry for this pure. Every time I say pure, I, well, I wish it was pure. But it is just poor quality. <laughs> poor quality of my play. Okay. So um, let's play one more game. And I think, and I think that will be enough. And here comes... Uh, whiny, uh 2k or whiny <laughs> Zweika, <laughs> don't know, except e4, e5. So I'm gonna play Philidor in this time. Let's play Philidor. Knight f6 and bishop e7. Just uh, remembering my childhood. I was playing this several games. All right, bishop e2 is one of the interesting lines here, but I think, well, it was possible to play bishop f4 instead of castling. It is an interesting hybrid variation 
that is suggested by Parimarjan Negi in his theoretic book dedicated to e4, opening repertoire. So rook e1, bishop f8, and bishop f1, something like this. Mm. So white provokes me to play h6, g5, and to take on e4, right? Okay, it's understandable. It's understandable, but uh, I don't think it is a good idea for black, so I'll just protect d5 square, preventing knight d5, first of all, just to start with, right? And then I will come back to normal development. Don't quite understand the idea of knight f3, but okay, maybe it is a playable move. Maybe white wants to play e5, something like this. So let's start with the h6 first, just to... Oh, really? I expected bishop h4, which I wanted to meet with the knight e7. Bishop f6 gives up a dark squared bishop for no compensation. So it definitely has a solid position, but long term, black should be better already, controlling more squares on the board. So dark squares are definitely controlled better by black. Knight to e5, then what? Knight goes back to d4, probably. But this looks so natural, I don't know. Knight to e5, let's try it. Okay, in this case, I think taking with the pawn looks, looks also good. So I improved my pawn structure a bit because pawn on d6 was potentially vulnerable and also I gave my bishop new perspectives so now it can go somewhere to c5 maybe, exerting pressure on f2 and so on. All right, where the knight goes to g3 probably. Let us meet this guy with h5, h4. Okay. Um, G6 now. If not G3, I can still play H4 if I want. Wow. Okay. A4 or C4? Both moves actually weaken a lot of dark squares. So I'm happy to see this. To see this happened on the board.
And now what about improving the position of the rook a bit? Also looks very natural. Okay, queen no longer controls g5, so maybe it is a good moment to play queen g5. Nah, it's, it's too obvious, right? Maybe queen h4 instead, intending something like bishop takes h3 at some point. Or maybe just normal bishop e6 move, why not? Just complete the development, then maybe doubling rooks along the d-file. Looks like just a normal decent play, right? Bishops are great pieces. So they are placed somewhere in my camp, but they control a lot of squares <laughs> in opponent's camp as well. Okay, that is a desperation, I think, because it drops before, and this pawn was very, very important. Yeah, it's over. It's over now. Um, what happened here? So, yeah. I think the best move if you played already this variation with the rookie one is just to play bishop to f1. And then you gradually prepare development of your pieces. You can even switch to this fianchetto. So g3, bishop, g2, also quite playable. You have uh, quite good... Um, Pieces placement here, very, very um, comfortable one. So maybe not very active, not very ambitious, but still you control a lot. So uh, what is better for white in this position is that uh, there is more space, right? And you have to enjoy this. So g3, bishop, g2, control in d5. So for black, it is a different, uh, sorry, a natural idea just to play d5 at some point to undermine e4 pawn to try to just... Um, um, win uh, the control over the center back and so on but uh, if you play correctly and control d5 uh, for black at some point uh, it will be quite hard to find the counterplay that's the idea so bishop g5 uh, is also playable maybe but uh, a bit dubious because at some point there will be a problem with the e4 pawn maybe it was possible for me just to play h6 g5 and knight takes e4 i didn't want to take this risk because position became um, could have become uh, quite open in this case and I'm not developed completely that's why I just played d6 sorry c6 control and d5 square and then after knight f3 h6 uh, definitely again bishop to h4 was a move uh, because still I don't think that g5 is possible um, and uh, yeah you just save your bishop on the board after bishop f6 queen f6 I just control the position much better than white does so you no longer have a piece that uh, controls dark squares all around the board. That's the main problem. So long-term black is already much better here. That's the mistake. And the rest was just a conversion of this advantage. That is the point. All right. Um, sorry for poor quality of my games today. Definitely, I did a lot of blunders. I played like, yeah, like a patter uh, in many games. So, um, maybe because I was tired, maybe there are some other reasons, I don't know. Uh, maybe I'm just a bad player. Okay, that was just a joke. So, <laughs> um, anyways, uh, thanks a lot for being with me, as usual, uh, this Friday uh, night. Um, premium members are welcome to the next episode of Training Tuesday, the next Tuesday. And uh, everybody else, uh, well, just become premium users. Uh, you will understand 
that those who already did that uh, did absolutely right. There are a lot of uh, resources here in Chess24 uh, to improve your level of understanding, to improve your level of play. Uh, a lot of resources are just hidden for regular users and they are just uh, possible to use uh, if you are a premium user. For example, my show, uh, Training Tuesday. Uh, have a nice weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.